Hi everybody, my name is Sean Nolan and today I'm going to talk to you about McQueen, which recently transferred from the St James Theatre off West End to the West End at the Theatre Royal Haymarket. I went and saw the show's first preview last Monday, I don't know what Monday this is in comparison to how you're watching this, uh, it was back in like late August, obviously you know when the first preview is if you've seen it, and I want to talk to you today about what I thought of the show, some constructive criticism, and also some fantastic parts about it. If you didn't know this already, obviously I'm sure most of you do, McQueen started its life off West End earlier on this year at the St James Theatre and it starred Stephen Wright as uh, Alexander McQueen and Diana Agron, who is of Glee fame, as Dahlia, the other main character in the show. And the story is basically trying to chart the story of Alexander McQueen's life. Um, I thought it would be kind of beginning to end or through his creative process, but it actually focuses on one night of his life, which I think comes a little bit before his mum dies, which as we all know, shortly after follows his own suicide. So the story actually does chart an interesting one. I'm not quite sure if it's true. It does label itself as being true. I wasn't quite sure if it was, but I'm sure if I Google it, it must be true because it does actually say it is true. And it's about a girl named Dahlia who sneaks into McQueen's kind of fashion lair, I'm going to refer to as, where basically keeps all of his clothes that he's been making and stuff like that. And he's spending the night there because he's trying to brainstorm ideas for his next collection for the next day. And Dahlia breaks in in hope of stealing a dress of McQueen's and McQueen captures her. They kind of get into conversation. Uh, McQueen starts to kind of go into his deep kind of life story as we go straight away. And Dahlia basically says to him, please don't call the police on me. Um, please kind of train me up to be a fantastic person. Um, and he does so. So they head off for a night out on the club and stuff like that and into kind of the world of fashion and he kind of talks her into interviews and stuff. I'm not quite sure how it works out, I'll explain it more in a moment. Uh, but basically it does follow this one night with Dahlia and McQueen and Dahlia kind of helps McQueen realise the good side of life whilst McQueen also does the same to Dahlia. So it's kind of picking two people up out of this depressive zone, which is definitely a vibe that comes from the show, very depressive, um, because everyone in the show is actually depressed, pretty much. There are only about four characters, I'd say. The only four characters there are is um, obviously McQueen and Dahlia, and also the character that Tracy Ann Oberman plays. I love Tracy Ann Oberman, and it's actually my favorite character. It's Isabella Blow. As we all know, Isabella Blow had a massive influence on Alexander McQueen's life. If you know about McQueen, you would know that. Uh, and also Laura Reese, who plays Arabella. Arabella is an interviewer. Um, I can't remember what paper she comes from, but she interviews McQueen and Dahlia answers a question for her in a very good scene before the end of Act One. Oh, and also Mr. Hitchcock, uh, who's played by Michael Burtonshaw, and he is a character who basically works in the Taylors, where McQueen trained originally, and we visit there on the night out as well. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about basically what I thought about the show now. And what I thought about the show mainly was that I thought it was a very weird choice to talk about McQueen's life. Uh, it was very interesting for them to take a night of his life and kind of make conversation that reflected on life before. He makes conversation about past collections, which are definitely referenced a lot in the show, uh, about his life before, about his mother, who as we all know he had a very, very strong relationship with, um, also about his depression and the way he sees life. It was a very interesting way to present the show and I quite enjoyed it that it wasn't a jump through his life to kind of quickly try and tell it. It was a reflective kind of story and a very deep one. And the same with Dahlia. Dahlia was obviously a character we didn't know at the beginning, but I did feel myself actually reaching for Dahlia's kind of happiness more than I felt reaching for McQueen's. I felt McQueen was kind of, I was quite irritated by him by the end. I'm not sure I was supposed to find him irritating. I think I was supposed to find him uplifting, but I did find him more irritating than I found Dahlia at the very end of the show. I found Dahlia very sad and kind of, I just wanted the best for her in the end because it did turn out obviously her intentions weren't as honest as she made them out to be at the very beginning. I won't ruin the story for you. Um, so yes, I would actually recommend this show mainly to artsy kind of people, people that are interested in McQueen or would think they would be interested in McQueen. I wouldn't recommend it to kind of an old couple wanting to go out to go and see a play or just kind of middle-aged people thinking, you know, we'll go out for a fun night out. Maybe young people. I feel like young people will enjoy it because it is a very kind of young, youthful show and people that appreciate art, I'd say, but I wouldn't say it was a kind of thing, hubs, husband and wife going out kind of for the evening just for a play because I wouldn't say you'd get the right effects you'd want. You kind of, you need to know a bit about him and his relationships to understand it and also appreciate kind of very odd out there kind of moments every now and again so if that does appeal to you this show definitely will as well I actually want to give a shout out as well to fantastic casting choices. I don't know, I can't quite see, oh, casting director here. There are three of them. It's Kate Plantin, Jane Collins, and Adam Maskell. Not that, I don't know necessarily, maybe you, maybe you guys know casting directors. I just want to say the casting was absolutely fantastic. I think people look like they're who they should look like necessarily. They very much fit the roles and they very much, it was just very well done. All the dance in the ensemble I think was absolutely incredible. And to me, that was actually the standout. They were also, as well as being dancers for certain parts, they're obviously also models at points. And they're just really well, 
gelled into this kind of thing. And the only other time I've seen such a fantastically well-suited ensemble that can be so multi-talented recently is in Bender Like Beckham, which actually we talk about in a future video. Um, they were incredible and they fit both roles perfectly. And also I want to say that Stephen Wright looks so much like Alexander McQueen, it's laughable. Like he actually looks just like him. It's fantastic. And he has the accent on point, satisfyingly irritating. That's why I always found about Alexander McQueen's things. If you ever watch any videos of him or his collections where he comes to talk at the end, he's very, very satisfyingly awkward. Um, and Dahlia, Carly Bowden, is it Carly Bo Borden? Sorry. Sorry, Carly Borden. She was incredible casting. I'd love to have seen Diana Agron, because I know Diana Agron is a very kind of quiet and and quite shy person, I feel, when she portrays characters. So um, I'd be very much intrigued to see how she'd have taken on the role. But Carly Borden, I felt, gave this really nice ballsiness to the character, and it was really nice to see. Tracy Ann Oberman, I also thought was a fantastic standout. I find her hilarious, and I think she was supposed to be very sinister with her Isabella Blow. Isabel Blow was quite a weird person anyway, and I think she plays that very, very well. And then Michael Burton, sure as Mr. Hitchcock, was very kind of affirming, yet sensitive, and just really quite funny. Uh, and Laura Reese was very, was very, she just felt like a journalist. She was incredible. Very, very good casting. And also playwriting wise, I thought it was very, very good. There were times I thought maybe they could have written it a bit shorter. I felt like they were going on for a very long time with some parts. But there were also parts where he was referencing parts of McQueen's characteristics that we knew as an audience, the way he waves at the end of his shows and stuff. It was very, very well written and very well put together. Uh, and I was very, very impressed. So. That concludes the end of my review, and as I said, if you're an artsy person, or someone who very much enjoys things that are very abstract, definitely, definitely go and go and see this show. It is very, very good, if that's, your, who, that's who you kind of are. If you're not, maybe give it a miss this time. But nonetheless, I give this show four stars, I think. I think it was four star worthy. Maybe borderline three stars, purely because I thought some parts, some parts were quite slow. But definitely give it a try if it's your kind of thing. Tickets are available down below at London Theatre Direct. And you can follow me over at Shawnee Cat on Twitter. And tweet me letting me know what you thought of the show if you've been to go and see it.